So let's take a look at how an Ellingham diagram is created or constructed. And an Ellingham diagram is one which allows us to find for an oxidation reaction what the equilibrium partial pressure is in the gas phase. So once again, let's start with the fact that at equilibrium, delta G is equal to RT ln of PO2, assuming we have written the reaction for one mole of O2 gas, right? So for any value of PO2, if we fix PO2, then we can determine delta G as only being a function of T, right? So we can take a look at what that looks like. So this is a plot here of delta G, right? Starting at zero and getting increasingly more negative. And this should have on here units of joules per mole. And along the y-axis, we have temperature in K. And so this is for uh, increasingly smaller PO2. So each of these lines corresponds to a particular value of PO2. So now what we can do is that we can superimpose on here a plot for delta G for any given reaction as a function of T, right? And we expect that that should sort of go up like this. The delta G of formation should be increasing with temperature. So let's take a look at an example of that. So this is an example actually for the uh, formation of Cu2O and delta G is given by this expression here. This is in joules. And that's not important, but that defines this line right here. Okay, so this is for the formation of Cu2O. And so let's see, if we were going to write this as a reaction, we would need to do it like this. Right, so that's the delta G for that reaction. And so what we can do is we can see for any given temperature, essentially, so let's say that we're looking at a temperature of 900 K, what the equilibrium PO2 is, because that's where the delta G curve intersects this particular value of PO2. Okay, so if we have then a plot which shows the delta G of formation for a reaction and the PO2 lines, we can essentially find the equilibrium oxygen partial pressure at any temperature. And that's what the Ellingham diagram gives us. Now the Ellingham diagram, instead of plotting all these lines, actually just uses a scale around the outside axis that shows these different values of PO2, but it does it in such a way that you could connect them back to the origin in order to make the line. So let's take a look at the Ellingham diagram. So this is the Ellingham diagram. And let me point out a few features on here. So the x-axis is usually given in degree C, but then we have sort of this, uh, so we have this y-axis here with zero degrees C, but then we have this sort of second y-axis over here, which represents zero K, so negative 273C. Our y-axis is delta G equals RT ln of PO2, just like before. And then this is actually really our origin up here. So where T equals zero K and delta G equals zero. There are all these axes around the outside. The one we want to focus on here is the one that says PO2 comma K. And that means that on the inside 
of the axis, the label is PO2, so for example, 10 to the minus 6, and the label, this is PO2, the label on the outside, 10 to the 6, this is K. Uh, you can see that there are lots of different oxidation reactions here, labeled. The legend here shows you that the some of these have a melting or boiling reaction either for the element or for the oxide. So that's what those points are on there. We will likely not talk about the CO, CO2 ratio or H2, H2O ratio, but that's what these other axes are for here. So this is the way, this is the Ellingham diagram and we see now where it comes from. So the PO2 lines, which are just not shown on here, connect this origin, for example, over to here. So this is what we had been looking at on the previous slides.